also in having the generalist, everything is sort of co-taught. So you're getting multiple perspectives around a specific student. And having the advocate counselor allows a, even a third perspective that's not pedagogical, but about the whole kid, um, all working toward getting that one credit. So it's a big group effort. So a, a real simple way to break down the, the split of the role between the generalist and the AC, the advocate counselor, sorry, is to, is to think about the generalist is sort of the one who leads the academic charge for credits, and the AC supports sort of the social side of what our students are dealing with. That's not you know, hard and fast. We split those responsibilities sort of between us. Um, and certainly because of Preston's background in, in my classroom, he also does a lot of academic planning with credit acquisition for our students and goal setting for the entire school year. So really a, a good team like ours, splits those responsibilities. <laughs> and, and, and we do a little bit of everything so to make sure that the entire student is, is covered both socially and academically. And then in regards to like our partnership, I think that for us, I think we do a really good job of kind of like blurring the line a little bit between uh, what's just supposed to be academic and uh, generalist focused, and then what's supposed to be like emotional and uh, AC or general, uh, advocate counselor focused. Um, I think with us, like, because I, I do come from a different type of background as a counselor, I do a lot of like the academic planning, but I couldn't do some of the academic planning without like Drew's suggestions. So for example, if I have a student who's going to take the Regents in January, and I know I want to plot three English classes for November, December, January, I don't teach English. You know, I can look at all the classes, but it would basically be better for him to give me a recommendation of like what those classes should be. So President and I sort of decide on a day-to-day -day basis, on a day-to-day -day basis, where, when and where we're going to meet. Um, we spend a lot of our time during the classroom, in the classroom all day long, so a lot of our interaction is, is then and there with the students present. Um, and formally we meet once a week as a team, not just President and I, but with the rest of the instructional team as well, so that's at least once a week, formally, and then constantly informally, certainly on text message and phone calls outside of school as well. Or in the morning times, like that's kind of how we start our day. Like some of it's usually just like, hello, kind of, sort of. But you know, hellos often lead to, hey, I saw so-and-so, and oh, let me tell you what I found out about so-and-so yesterday. So we kind of like take those moments, or if something like egregious kind of happened the day before, then we'll plan to kind of like meet in the morning outside of our normal scope. But I think our relationship is so fluid that it doesn't kind of require a specific time for us to kind of like tackle things. We're more so like, if we can kind of tackle it now and kind of like have a dialogue about it in the present, or maybe we both may step out of the arena while the CST is kind of like working with the students so there's another adult in the building. So it's never on our end between just us like super, super, super structured because we kind of allow ourselves the flexibility to speak as often as we can.